All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, my people. Ladi hail, ladi hail, ladi hail. Uh, it's me, Namo, N to the A to the triple M O. Uh, it's actually one M, but you know, these days everybody's doing rap, so me too. I've started also rapping the name N to the A to the triple M O, Namo. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome to Don't Forget to Flush, uh, that podcast that is all about the African Renaissance culture commentary and very importantly, toilet seat conversations. And so, I'm very excited to be out here in Houston. Yeah, we have a Houston thing going on. And traveled all the way, brought out my whole equipment, the entire team, you know, all of us, a team of one person. <laughs> and I came out to talk to someone who, um, in the community, in our groups, her voice has always been a solid place to go to to hear truth. And she's on Facebook, she's on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited to be here interviewing, having a conversation with the one and the only Ada Enugu. What up, what up, what up, what up? What, 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 <laughs> what, what, what a welcome intro, right? Like, like, what up, what up? I know, what's up? What's up? What's up? I am live. <laughs> <laughs> we are live. We are live. <laughs> We're right here. But we are live in your house, though. I mean, like, yeah. this this house was a lot of, it cost a lot of rokus on social media when you <laughs> when you talked about buying your own place. So that's, that, that we should talk about as a different topic, but... Today, I'm excited to be here because one of the videos, and by the way, guys, if you're listening to this, um, the profile is Ada Enugu, am I right? Or, or tell, the, tell the folks, yeah, tell the folks about it. So actually, my personal Facebook page is Ade Enugu. Okay. Then on Instagram, I'm like, baby, do okay. <laughs> it's again? <laughs> baby, do okay. <laughs> oh, God. And then I- I'm just all over the place. And then my blogging page, vlogging or um, video blogging whatever you call it it's actually unfiltered adenugu adenugu unfiltered yeah so i know it's unfiltered dash adenugu oh, oh unfiltered dash, dash adenugu uh, hey, i have to connect you know i have to connect <laughs> too because i don't want people to have think that i have you know three personalities you know baby do okay adenugu and then unfiltered how do you say baby, when you say, what's the spelling to baby do is it oh baby day okay Baby D O K. It's an e- oh, English and Igbo. And uh, you know Adenugu. You don't you don't feel to disappoint. <laughs> eh? You are not Baby B A B Y D I O K A Y. <laughs> baby D O K. You know, I do okay. It's not my hey, fault. Oh D O K. Oh You know, the interesting thing is that when anyone speaks to you, the last thing that they will think is that you it's like you have to tell them that you are very Igbo. Yeah. Like people don't people don't talk to you and then they'll be like, Oh, she's Igbo. It's like you are the one who's <laughs> having to tell them that you're Igbo. No. They always think that I just came. <laughs> they think I'm fresh off the boat. So they don't believe me when I tell them I've been here like over twenty years. They don't believe me. For real? Yeah, people don't believe me. But then in the work environment, I'm completely a different person. Now you're back to the personalities. Please tell us about that. Oh, so at work, Mm -hmm. my white girl comes out. (laughs) That's where the paycheck comes. So I have to behave myself. Oh, oh, for real? (laughs) So so at work, I'm more professional. Okay. So I kind of separate my professional life from my personal life. So I don't add, I don't add, you know, co-workers, you know, bosses or whatever. But it's so funny you said that one of my co-workers found me. (laughs) one of my videos so, and she was like so he I, I, called me he, he's actually nigerian he called me he said are you do you have a twin i i was like i, I know you say you had you have a twin i was like yeah i do have a twin she was he was like oh i think it's your twin that i saw on you know on video it must not be you because it's like a whole a, different yeah, person. a different person it's like <laughs> i see you at work with your coin coin like, you know your you know going up and down the elevator mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden i i came on social media like, i guess people were sharing my video yeah so we had like a, a mutual friend mm-hmm. that shared my video he was like ah i know this person who i know this like <laughs> <laughs> i work with this friend. but you must have said you must have said it wasn't me it wasn't it wasn't me. it's my it's, so it's my I, twin with your best I, I white girl that's accent. the good thing about having a twin because actually i do have a twin sister that that's very true that's, that, very true. that's the good thing about having a twin sister so i can always blame 
the naughty side to, you know, give it to her. And when I want to be professional, I'll be professional. So he was like, he was so shocked. And then he went to one of our co-workers and was like, is, wait a minute, is this not EJ? Like, you know, this is EJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was, the, my other co-worker, she said that laughing. I was like, yeah, that's her. <laughs> so she does, that means your co the other person knows more about the profile then. Yeah, but I don't work with them anymore. I've left the company, but he called That's me for that. And he was like... <laughs> Did you say you left the company? Yeah, I'm no longer with the company, but they But it's not because they found out. It's not like, okay, once people find out, you just be like, deuces, I'm out. No, not like that. Me, anywhere that... I can't do deuces when you have bills to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's doing deuces in America. You can't just be doing deuces. Ah, unemployment cannot cover mortgage. No, no. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so no, that's very cool. That's very cool. So tell me this: um, how long have you been doing this? Because I know a lot of people are like they they run into your videos with you speaking your truth, and you're saying things that is the truth, and then they're like, no, 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 it's your truth. You're like, no, it's the truth, and they have this whole back and forth with you about your opinions. But how long have you been doing it? Um, when did I even start? I think I started late last year no way yeah late last year so with all these fights that i've been having on social media based on the things you've been saying you're saying that all this just started last year yeah i said that like i mean adenugo <laughs> has been a troublemaker on facebook for <laughs> how many years now i mean i joined facebook like in the early when did facebook start back then yeah but you know I, I everybody keeps on saying oh you should start blogging you should start blogging oh you're so funny i enjoy reading your page mm -hmm. whenever i get bored i go to your page so it's like i've heard I've, I've had like about a couple of friends set up blogging page for me yeah but i'm like i guess to me i kept on saying this is not what i want like because it, to me when you start blogging it becomes an assignment mm. Unlike when, if I have something to write, I can just write it on Facebook. Okay. But now you have people that are expecting, the you know, the, expect the expectation is, yeah, is the expectation there. The expectation is, is now yeah. there. And then it's like you have to feed mm -hmm. the beast as it were. Exactly. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm not a, you know, I don't want to write. Like I left school how many years ago? I'm not about to start <laughs> <laughs> writing term I don't think paper. that's what it's about, but okay. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to write. Uh, you know, it's, it's it feels like I'm writing an assignment. Okay. So I'm like, I don't want to blog. I think I'm better with videos. So what's driving it though? So if you, so just to be clear, you've been at this a while personally, just mm -hmm. from all the reference on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of put it together or packaged it together as something you want to do late last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But interestingly, the controversies that has generated from your commentary and your videos. And guys, if you're listening to this, you have to check her out on Facebook or YouTube or even if you just follow her and you see some of the things she says. It's like... She says the funniest, randomest things, and people just end up fighting in the comment section. Like I always feel like your comment section is like where where Royal Rumble happens. They're fighting their ancestors, not me. <laughs> <laughs> they're arguing with their keyboard. They're, they're argue, exactly their keyboard warriors. That yeah, is so, so funny. So mm -hmm. so what drives that? What drives your? Would you say it's passion, or would you? What what would you attribute to the fact that this is? who they are seeing and you've packaged it and it's now something that people that can watch on unfiltered at day in Ugu. Um, I think to me, it's like whatever you do in life, you have to be true to yourself when you're honest. I feel like when it comes to social media, it's all about packaging. People just tend to pretend and only show the happy side and make it seem yeah. like everything is perfect. Everything and is okay. Yeah. So, but to me, I've gotten to a point in my life. I'm like, I don't care. It is my life. Mm -hmm. I do whatever I want to do. I pay my bill. I, I do whatever I want to do. I say whatever I want to say. The only time I would not say it if it's going to stop my paycheck. <laughs> if it's not going to stop my paycheck, oh well. But, you know, I just feel like people need to be more realistic and stop all these fake, fake, fake just to please other people. And I guess people just like my honesty. Mm. And That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. So, so you have to live your truth. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you keep listening, please send us an email if you can about what we're about to talk about. Uh, you can get us on don't forget to flush pod at gmail.com. Please shoot us an email and you can follow us on social media at don't forget to flush 
um, uh, on Instagram, but on Twitter is don't forget to flush P, the letter P, um, on Twitter. And we also have a Facebook fa- page. Uh, don't forget to follow us. Just follow us. Find us. You know, uh, click on our link and please connect with us and listen to us where everywhere where podcasts can be found. So just putting that out there. So, Ada, mm-hmm. it's not your real name. No. Is that something you want to talk about or? Yeah. You want my employers to find me. <laughs> you want okay, me to be okay, jobless. Okay, okay. We're going to stay with no, Ada. We're going, no, to stay with, we're going to stay with Ada. Don't, 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 don't kill it now because if you, anything you do right now is going to change the face of this. We still want you to keep going for a couple of years. Trust me, now that you've packaged it. So we don't even want to know your government oh. name. But we will not be surprised when you talk about yourself in a third person yeah. in your videos and you reveal what your name is. So folks have to follow you to actually know when that happens. Okay. So let's pivot quickly to the main topic of today, right? It's all about the African Renaissance. Mm-hmm. That's the way this podcast is set up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you put out a video. I think it was a very recent video. And you were talking about something. And, you know, we listened to it and the folks on our team was like, yo, you, you have to spend some time with this lady because she's the real deal. And it's something that people have taken for granted and it's not talked about, but you titled it in a very powerful manner. You called it the power of loneliness. Yes. And, you know, with everything going on right now, whether it's mental health or anything about, you know, relationships and, 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 and abuse and me too and, you know, all that is this underlining question that nobody really just tries to answer and it has to do with what you talked about, about loneliness. So mm-hmm. let me ask you this. Now, anyone who wants to catch up the backstory, please go watch our video. Um, it's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. It's been shared. Um, but... The power of loneliness is this. How and why is this affecting Africans in the diaspora? Let's start from there first. Um, Okay, so I I think when it comes to loneliness, it's not only Africans. People feel lonely, whether you're, it it has nothing to do with your skin color. Okay. But I think the pressure of marriage is what, especially in African culture, it's why it seems like it's worse in the mm. African culture, but it's not. And when people talk about loneliness, they only think it pertains to, you know, single people. Okay. Loneliness pertains to everybody, even married, single, gays, lesbians, whatever you want to call yourself. The whole nine. Yeah, loneliness that applies. So it's like I was actually listening to the news the other day because me, I usually have the TV on, the news, local mm-hmm. news, when I'm getting ready in the morning. And they were at, actually talking about how, you know, suicide has drastically increased mm-hmm. since social media. So I feel like, um, you know, I, especially as a, as a single person, it's like everybody's like, oh, you should get married. You should get married. You should get married. But one thing people forget is that being married does not solve your loneliness. Mm. And the danger of loneliness is that when you find yourself in that situation, um, you start reaching out to people. You shouldn't even be reaching out to like in terms of, you know, like, okay, let me step back. Like, for example, um, as a human being, there's sometimes you have that urge of being with somebody the opposite, uh, the opposite sex. Or if you're gay, you want to be with a gay partner. You want to be with a a lover. You just want to be with someone. Somebody. Or around someone. Around somebody else. Yeah. That, you know, gets you excited. Not only, you know, girlfriends can, you know, like sometimes my girlfriends will be like, if you feel lonely, you can call me. I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. (laughs) <laughs> I don't, you don't, I mean, I can talk to you, but that's not the kind of feelings that I want. You know, you cannot fulfill that, that void for me. So you're not what I'm looking for right now. I want a Mecca. I want Namdi. I want, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just talk to somebody else yeah, I want, on the other side. But yeah. you see, that thing that you said, it's, it's like, it's very transparent and honest, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what really resonated in the video because folks who were watching it was like, you were saying something that seemed to apply to everyone. You know, oh yeah. I'm I'm married and I know several times when it seems like I'm on the road, I'm traveling, and for me it's like 
there are things that are going on real time that I mm-hmm. feel like I need to talk to my wife, but maybe she's at work or I can reach her or I'm on a flight. And mm-hmm. it's like, for me, it's short lived because I, I know by the time I get to a location, I can call. So I can sort of relate with what that feels like, um, you know, from a sense of somebody being in that state for a long time. Um, but for me, Prior to my getting married, I guess I was so caught up in work and the hustle mm-hmm. uh, and changing locations and things like that that I, 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 you know, the I don't think I will put up my hand and be like, with regards to relationships or with regards to the significant other, that I'm like the best voice. So when you were talking about it, it resonated with me as well as other people that led me to want to ask a question and say, who has it worse? The person who's single or the person who is engaged or married or in a relationship? I think... Because that's the unique thing. People don't yeah. believe that there's if, even any loneliness in that, you, that I think it depends on the type, the person you married. Okay. If you feel like you're married, you, you're happily married, you're married to somebody that you love, that loves you and all this stuff, like you have to have that person that gives you peace. And if you don't have that, whether you're married or not, you're going to be lonely. Because I've been in situations where I'm in a relationship, but I am so lonely mm. because I can relate to him. He, we don't have that, you know, he, he, he can relate to me. He doesn't understand me. I don't understand him. But then I said to myself, okay, physically we're there, you yeah. know, but spiritually we're not on the same page. And even mentally, right? Yeah, mentally, we're not on the same page. Like, even in terms of conversation, there's some things I'm like, okay, wow. And then you start asking yourself, why am I even with this person? And then you come to realize that you are with this person because you were lonely. Mm. And you felt like this person is now going to solve that loneliness. But then you came to realize that you two are not even compatible, which even pushed you further away. And now you are even, it's even worse when you find yourself in that situation because it's like you're in the, you're, you have to make decision. Okay, do I go back to being lonely again? Yeah. Or do I still remain with this person and then put this, you know, face, smiley face so everybody would think that I'm happy? Mm. And then you're like, okay, um, now, you know, now I don't want to start dating all over again, and you know. It's very interesting that you say that, B- mm-hmm. but if you think about it, though, the person who says, the person who says, so first of all, going, going, saying that you are going into a relationship because you are lonely is a very bad reason to be in a relationship. But there are a lot of people that go into, it, especially, it's especially women, as we start turning thirty, the pressure of you need to get married. You need to have children. Because we come from a culture where the it's like a pattern. You go to school. Once you graduate, okay, marriage. The next thing, marriage, children. Okay, you have one children, another children. Children, <laughs> when are you having another third children? When are you having a boy? When are you having a girl? And the pressure just continues. Exactly. It's like a pattern. And it's worse for women because they always, you know, African men, some some of them think that once you turn 30, you can never have your egg dry up. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's no science behind it, but, you know, what can there's I say? There's no science, but some people believe that, you know. I know some people in their 40s and they're dating like, you know, 21-year-old, you know, girls or 23 year because they believe that they're fertile mm. and the ones that are 30 are no longer fertile and even on social media there's all these groups that i mean people always talking about that oh you know your auntie you're retired you know you expired mm. and all that stuff so the pressure the family pressure my family they don't pressure me because if my mom asks me for a husband i'll ask her where did she mold one for me <laughs> so she better not ask me for that <laughs> They don't even try to. Hook but me not up as up. many people in our communities on the African side are actually fortunate in that. It, yeah. That, that, oh, yeah. That. The pressure of getting married. It's like, so as a result, everybody's like, oh my gosh, I'm about to turn 30, 35. I don't even have a husband. I don't even have a boyfriend. I don't even have any kids. Mm. And then before you know it, you start. And that's why I said the power of loneliness, because it makes you start settling. It makes you start accepting things that you normally wouldn't accept just because you you don't want to be alone. Wow, that is a great segue. That's a great segue to the culture commentary piece, right, about this podcast. So speaking about what you've just introduced, the fact that 
its power is when people, at least we, we're speaking of loneliness regards to relationships and, mm-hmm. you know, being by yourself. Yes. But you're saying that, or you're presenting this hypothesis that if there is a power at all with loneliness, it's in the fact of settling for things that you shouldn't be settling for. Yes, because you want to escape that loneliness. So let me give you an example. I've had, there was one, you know, the guy that, you, you know, liked me a lot. But I wasn't attracted to this guy. He kept on chasing me and chasing me and chasing me. Uh, I, I mean, I've been, yeah. Me. Was I like, mean, I've, ah, yeah. see, I I'm like, I'm not interested. But at the end of it, you know, my friend kept on bothering me, you know, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, you know. You know, you're not getting any younger, talk to him. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll talk to him. I'm like, okay, first of all, I started listening to things that, you know, I'm like, okay, there are some things that are the qualities I'm looking for in a man and he doesn't have it. Mm. But I'm like, okay, fine, fine. I'll talk to him. And then we started talking. I'm like, mm, okay, okay. I'm like, okay, I don't like his teeth or whatever, <laughs> but Sorry, what, what about if I- didn't think it was the I teeth that you were going to go for. I know my teeth. You look at my own teeth. No, but I'm just saying teeth. that I didn't think that was the issue. You can't, you no, can't, no, no, but my I thought you were going to start from something like, oh, you know, he, uh, he maybe but doesn't- But physical attraction he, is important. He stays he, home all day. And no, physical really attraction is important. You have to, your eyes have to like what you're seeing before you, I you thought know. beauty was in the eye of the beholder. Story, story, forget <laughs> that. <laughs> like I always say to people, if I don't see myself kissing you, we're wasting time. <laughs> you know, being with somebody you're not attracted to, it's like a torture. Mm. Like, because I ended up dating the guy and it's like when he calls me, I'm not even excited. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, hello. Okay, baby, I'm coming over. Okay, I'm going to see you at home. Like, I'm not excited because that physical attraction, we, t- we tend to undermine physical attraction. It's very important. Uh-huh. So, but and then co- compared to the guys that I've, I'm attracted to, that I've dated, like if they even call me and say, "Oh, I'm coming," you know, if they even call me, just I dance to the ringer. <laughs> you know, I'm like, "Hey!" What's the what's the phone is ringing? You're already I'm like, like "Hey!" hey. Chikwabaka is calling me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you're excited, and then they say, "Oh, I'm coming over." You run home. You know, you brush your teeth. You you know, you're freshen up. You're so excited to see them. So that's the thing, you know. But then. When you're lonely, you you start accepting things. You're like, okay, I don't like his teeth. But anyway, it's fixable. I can book an appointment for him to go to the dentist. And, you know, you start making up excuses, you know, trying to, fe- I think. Just the- to fill the void that the loneliness yes. has created. And the, the ugly side of it is that when you find yourself in that situation, you're busy trying to change the person mm. to fit into the kind of person, the kind of woman or man that you want for yourself. And people don't like to be changed, yeah. Because you 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 are not willing to accept them. For, you accepted them for who they. I mean, because you're lonely. Yeah, not because of them. It's really yes, because, because of because you're, you're trying, lonely. You're trying to like feel your yes. own. Yes, and then now you find yourself trying to t- change them. Yeah. So so if you think about it this way, one of the questions that anyone would have on a cross cultural basis is, you know, we all here in America, right? And would you say that the implications of loneliness in the form that we've been talking about it then is more on Africans because they are far from home or would you uh, versus African Americans or would you say there's some kind of shared experience that is called cross cultural it's shared and I think what I don't even know the, even beyond African Americans like Americans every, every, I mean, everywhere like I said loneliness does not you know, it doesn't discriminate, <laughs> just like cancer or death. Mm. It, it comes anytime. And I think one of the biggest issues, social media is a great platform. But the problem, the, the ugly side of social media is loneliness because people don't even know how to communicate. Like, for example, I'm the kind of person, and I, I, I keep on saying I'm going to make a video about this. I'm the kind of person... I like to reach out to people, mm-hmm. you know. Once in a while, if you come to my mind, I'm like, oh, I haven't spoken to this person. Let me call this person to see how they're doing. Yeah. 
And every single time I call people, I'm like, hey, how are you? I haven't spoken to you in a while, you know. Oh, I'm fine. And then they say to me, I say you're living your best life on Facebook, you know. <laughs> yeah, I want to be like you when you, know you grow up. You know how we always use all these cliches yes. and comments. Even so when we don't mean that. it to be like, ah, man, this guy is living his best life like, now. I can, you know. Yeah. And, I'm, and I get offended whenever people t- say that to me. I'm like... So, because you see me on Facebook, or they'll say that, oh, I, I see you on Facebook all the time, so I know you're okay. Yeah, but you know, we also like, saw on Facebook that you bought a house. Everybody will be like, you're living your best life yeah, now, Ada. I, I, I know, I know, but the, nobody, that's the that's what I'm saying, that's the ugly side of Facebook. Everybody posts the positive things. Mm. Nobody posts the positive, you know, the negative things. Like I said to my friends, I could be in the hospital, and I'm I'm going through my phone, because maybe my hand, my hand works, yeah. you know? I, I can be going through my phone. I'm like, oh. And I'll still post something uh-huh. positive. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I love this picture I took in Jamaica two years ago. Let me share it. And then I'll share the picture. Everybody around me would think that I'm living my best life in Jamaica. But my, you know, I'm, yeah, in, right I'm, in, the I'm in the hospital. Yeah. So that's the ugly thing about, you know, Facebook. I'm like, I don't post pictures when I'm crying. Like, you know, like I... I it just happened last week. I reached out to a friend. I was like, I haven't spoken to you in a while. She was like, oh, I see you're enjoying life. You know, I see you on Facebook all the time. I said, do you know I cried last weekend? You know? Wait, wait a second. <laughs> do you know I'm just second. because you're so you're, the, you're the kind of person where when people ask you generic things like how you doing or or they make a comment like that, you really tell them exactly what you, you no, 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 no. I think she's saying that, you know, basically what she's saying is that she sees I'm living my best life. I'm happy. Everything is yeah, going no, perfectly you've now well. you responded by telling her that you were crying last. And I'm like, just because she saw me smiling on Facebook does not mean that I was <laughs> smiling when I posted it, you know? So... But my thing is that you can be in the hospital. Yeah. You can be sad. You can, you know, but no, but I'm not going to be crying and be like, <laughs> and then I post it on Facebook. Yeah. Because Everybody I don't just want, stays within the- yeah, because you don't want people to see that ugly side of you. What do people see? So they see you all with makeup, everything all, you but know. But would you say like- that Americans are more forward in talking about those things than we are? Because it's, it, to me, I don't know if it's, I don't know if we, I don't know if the situation is purely from the perspective of not wanting to, as opposed to the fact that we've been conditioned not to. I mean, I talk about a lot of times about men and how we're raised to not cry and to have this very, the persona that we're supposed to present is supposed to be like, we fix all things, we resolve all things, we do all things because we're men. And so in that, in that, in that fulcrum, we're lonely in the space of not being able to share what is going on. And then we're caught in this quagmire of, oh, you know, if I do it, how will people perceive me? And then it just stays all bottled, bottled up inside. Yeah, it's the culture. But I think, with Afri- so you agree with, with me that the, yeah. the African culture sort of pushes it in a worse scenario. Yeah, than- especially with the whole pressure of marriage. Okay. Like if a single girl comes out say and say now, oh, I'm lonely. It's like, oh, she can't get a man. Oh, she mm. can't get a man. So she doesn't want anybody to look at her like somebody that can, you know, catch one bubble. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody else around her is married. People will start asking, what's the problem? What's wrong with you? You know, nobody wants to answer those kind of questions, but mm-hmm. it's okay. Like sometimes I call my friends. I'm like, I'm sad today. You know, and then you're a like, different kind of person. You know, yeah, I'm like, uh, wait, you pick up the phone and you call your friends and you just be like, yeah, I do that all the time because I'm like, I don't bottle things inside. So Me, folks, I'm the you kind heard of, that first. Yeah, great advice. Don't bottle things up. I you don't. Should, I, I should try that. I should and, pick up the phone and be like, I'm sad today. And send yeah, me and some people, money. You know, I, <laughs> all my friends are poor. They don't send me any money. Wow. <laughs> I'm just joking. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, my right friends, now, my friends, friends, are, friends are, are like, no, no, all your friends, friends have just, just, all your friends have just said to themselves, this is it, it's a wrap, we're my, out, No, peace. my friends are rich, but I don't see their money. <laughs> but, yeah, but to me, we come from culture where people are shamed easily for yeah. speaking about how they feel. Like, if you're married and, you know, a lot of women don't speak up if they're going through a lot in their marriage because it's always like they blamed that it's their fault. 
okay, maybe if you had served him food at 7 p.m. and not 8 p.m. It's always he would have, yeah, it's always the, that everything is reduced to the things that you do. Yeah, not it's your, your fault. Con, you know, your yeah. contribution is evaluated based on your cooking and cleaning and exactly. all the menial tasks exactly. that anybody else can do, actually. You know, mm-hmm. you can hire someone to do that. I oh, always yeah. argue about that. Why can't you just hire somebody to do that and then set people free to actually do other things? Because some people came to this world to suffer. I did not come to suffer. Ah, that's a very strong mm-hmm. one. I don't believe anybody should have come to, mm. to. But that that is that is you're right. It's created through the whole cultural aspects of it. Yeah, we. But live sometimes in a some people are dedicated to that because it's sort of their preference, which is fine. I don't mind it if that is your preference. And I know a lot of people that don't mind being in that situation of the fact that oh, you know what, I have to like meet certain expectations to show my value and all those kind of things. But that's why I feel like. Whether it's that scenario or the scenario of loneliness because you don't have anyone, I think the common thread is the fact that we, people unconsciously reinforce the negatives on people's lives. For instance, mm-hmm. you're married, your wife is doing the cleaning, the cooking, the, all the things, but you would never step in to help. Mm-hmm. So technically... By not doing anything to help, you are reinforcing that negative impression that this is all you are good for. And they never bond that man that we just sit there and I'm doing all that stuff cleaning. Like, you better come and help. <laughs> but but it's true. I mean, I'll force it's, you to help. Oh. It, that's, it, I guess that's why before you get married, you have to marry the kind of person that you know you'll be able to work with. Mm. You know, like if I know, I me, I cannot marry a typical Igbo person. I'm already Ibotic. We both cannot be too Ibotic. No, no, wow. You know? <laughs> You're already Ibotic in your yeah. own words. Yeah, but, oh that means God, that no. any Igbo person should be all right. No, we need balance, you know. Which balance again I are you need, talking about? For me, I need somebody, because I grew up here, you know. Okay. I need somebody that understands. That is a big statement because... You st- we started this, you talked about the fact that people are unassuming. They're like, oh, you must have just come off the boat. But you've been here a long time. You literally been, grew up here. Yeah, I, I grew up here. Yeah, But, but at the same time, because b- b- I, I picked the good side of you know Nigeria and the good side of America and I combined both. And the ugly side, I leave America, the ugly side. And you know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. But me, I pick and choose which one works for me. Okay. Because I don't believe that everything in Igbo culture is the best. And same with American culture. So give me one example. Like, um, you know, it should be the only cook in the house. Okay. I was raised that way. And then I grew up, I said, hey, bam. Hey, so I'll be cooking and, you know, you'll be watching TV and doing nothing and not helping because you're the man. Like, I don't mind cooking. I, I cook a lot. That we that we know. In uh-huh. fact, from the first times that I knew you. Mm-hmm. In fact, you used to have these whole videos that you used to cooking put out. Videos. where Cooking videos. Where I folk know. Where watch and, and, and learn how to cook yeah. and all that. Yeah. I, you know, like, in, um, in Nigeria, I came from a culture, especially in a family where men don't cook. Mm-hmm. men don't clean like my brother he doesn't even know how to boil an egg you know so because Th- that is very of, interesting but all of us sis, you know all his sisters he, i have only one brother okay all of us we yeah, all but that one cooks. has nothing to do with culture and that was because he's the only boy and you all were just spoiling him no 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 uh, spoil guinea he got the most whooping my mom does not do that <laughs> but it's just the culture we come from men Niger are not parents seen can't just allow the yeah. only boy a oh no no he got experience. the most whooping no. but my thing is that um no matter what, if, even though it's in my family where the women cooked and not the men, but it's still the culture Yeah, where men, women, like I, one of the videos that I made is that I feel like our parents spent so much time raising their daughters on how to be husband. I mean, mm-hmm. how to be wives, how, how to, to be cater wives, to their husband. You know, that is a very true, that, that, yeah. is, that is one of the things that I talk about a lot too, yeah. about the fact that, you know, whether it's in marriage or life, nobody gave us a manual. Nobody yeah. gave us a manual. Yeah. So, but there's been a lot of emphasis on parents raising their daughters to be a certain way. Yeah, and to, in order like, to be married. Yeah, nobody's like taking the boys and like saying, yes. you know, they you, you, you our boys. Be committed. you should be committed as much as the girls to this whole experience. Yes. So I'm, a, I'm aligned with you on that one. Yeah, that so, one, they, so they, you know, like, you know, like I said in one of my videos, when we're growing up, 
me and my sisters were in the kitchen, we we're cooking when, you know, my brother is there, you know, playing around. Then when food is ready, he comes and he eats. And then it's like every little thing. Oh, yeah, woman. Is that how you're going to be taking care of your husband? You have to do this to take care of your husband. It's like they re- they spend so much time. That's my problem with that statement. They say yeah. things like, you know, take care of your husband. I'm yeah. like, so who's now going to take care of he's you? He's a grown man. No, but who's now going to take care of you if you, all you're doing is taking care of your husband? And they say, oh, he's going to take care of you by giving you money. Yeah. I'm and like, I'm like, why, can I, ha- like why can I have the same kind of treatment? You know, it's like, exactly. why don't you treat me the way I treat you as the way we're taking care of each other? Exactly. You know? So. So that's one of the Igbo part of Igbo culture that I'm like, I grew up, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, no. No, especially in America where everybody's working. Yeah. You went to work eight hours. I went to work it's sometimes even longer. So you can't just come home, expect me to come. Ah, baby, food is ready. And then I bring water for you to wash your hands. You eat. I take no, nobody's your servant, you know? And like I always because I I I <laughs> I used to date a guy that we if, go. Ah, that Here he we wants go. me to be serving him and doing this because that's what his mother did. I say, I'm not your mother. You know, that's, that's a very what interesting his, thing, right? Yeah. Everybody seems to hide behind what somebody else did. Did I'm like, They're I'm not, not saying, your mother. But even that, even in that statement, mm-hmm. there's, not, there's nothing in that statement that says it was right. Yeah. When they say things like, oh, that's what my mother did, I always ask myself, okay, so does that statement now mean that because your mother did it, that's the right, right thing, thing to, to do. do. Like exactly. who validated the right, exactly. you know, the, its rightness in the grand scheme of things, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody works. Everybody has to contribute in one way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. But if you now go ahead and you have a family where it seems like one person is doing the So the, the parents are doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. But when you now come home, the pile on on one side versus the other side that's the part that I always scratch my head and be like, I don't know. I don't know if I can, I, yeah. if I can get down with that kind of. Uh, I know a lot of Nigerian men that believe that it's a woman's job to cook. It's a woman's job to clean, and and I get that. Like when a guy is approaching, he's always like, "Oh, do you know how to cook?" It's like, how does that? You know, what does this have to do with whether I'm a good person? Yeah, but it's possible too not, that the guy doesn't know how to cook, so it's like two of us cannot uh, not know how. I to know, cook. I know, but my thing is that that's one thing. The different the difference between Americans Americans those kind of things don't bother them I'm not saying they don't like a woman to cook once in a while it but doesn't it's not- bother them because there's DoorDash and there's Uber uh-huh. Eats we're in America let's do the DoorDash like everybody <laughs> else <laughs> Let's just cook my just ordering food together. Yeah. But, you know, like I say, I cannot marry a typical African man. I cannot. I need a balance. I need somebody that knows that, okay, sometimes EJ is tired or Adenugu is tired, you know? Yeah. That she needs, you know, she went to work and she needs. But there are tons of African men like that now. Yeah, there are a lot. I'm not saying that all African men. I didn't say all African men are. But, okay. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, let's agree on something then. Mm Mm-hmm. The the guys or the men that you're describing, not necessarily the ones you've described, but just mm-hmm. the idea, mm-hmm. um, we can't say it's the typical. We can't like I always feel as though I know more men who mm-hmm. are great in the kitchen, who are very supportive, mm-hmm. they take care of the kids as much as their wives do, or mm-hmm. you can maybe not as much, but you know, they are relevant, they are right there, they are they are doing the cooking and the cleaning as much. Um, you know, the house is kept a certain way because it's part of their own response. So I know so many of those guys that sometimes I'm like, I don't, I don't know that many men who are on the other side. Oh, I know. I know. Ah, there are too many of them. And some of them have even lived in America for years, but they still have that mentality that a woman is born to cater to them. So don't you think that 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 is more that that at that point is more of being opportunistic? Like, since everybody seems to say it, there's no proof that this is what everybody does. Because you know that's the thing about generic statements. Everybody will be like, Me, everybody I, I speak does. From my own experience, the ones that I tend to meet, they're always you know it's like it's uh, as a woman, this is your job. As a woman, this is your job. But it's not my job. And like I always say to them, I do things for you. Because I love you and I care for you. But when you start telling me it's my job, that's when I don't want to do mm. it. And you're not going to beat me up. I'm not even married to you to even start with. That, you know? That, that, I that. cook for you 
because I want to. I have to bring this back now mm -hmm. because we've now veered into this whole relationship management thing. I know. <laughs> but if you think about it, mm -hmm. that is what people seem to prefer than th that is what people they feel like being in those relationships where they can try to mold or fix things and repair things is why they would settle in the midst of their loneliness, right? That's mm -hmm. really that's really what you were trying to do. and I agree with it. It's like okay, Instead of trying to address loneliness in the light of what it is, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you know what? I'm going to go settle. Mm -hmm. And if I settle, these things I know are going to happen, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm still going to be lonely when all he's treating me like is the house girl or the person who takes care of the house. I'm the one who cooks, cleans, does everything. So, But I'll prefer that than actually dealing with, you know, being appreciating myself or creating my own avenues to actually have my own voice yeah you know and then like i said the danger of loneliness is that when you find yourself in that situation sometimes people just turn to people that are giving them that attention because i've been in situations where i like somebody it's like you like somebody they don't like you back um somebody else likes you but you don't like the person back the other person you know it's like you know the people that you want they don't want you and the people that you don't want, they're the ones blowing your phone every minute, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so, and then at a point, like I've heard some friends say to me, why don't you give this guy a chance? You know, give him a chance. He likes you. But I'm like, have you looked at his, you know, his teeth? Like, I'm not attracted <laughs> to We're back to the teeth. <laughs> oh, I God. I guess I just want to <laughs> keep on using the teeth. <laughs> We're back to the teeth. Okay. Because I have to kiss you. Oh, and I my look God. At mouth. And that, one thing that we Lips. found out in this conversation is how much kissing means to you it and the teeth. <laughs> it means a lot. It's a very intimate moment. Oh, and, my God. And I don't want you, you know, sticking your tongue in my intestine. Okay. Okay. Now. Thank you. Thank you. That's too much. Too much of okay. both. All right. Dingba and Diva mm -hmm. segment uh -huh. on Don't Forget to Flush. Yes. Don't forget, folks. Send us an email at don't forget to flush pod at gmail.com. Now they're going to send us emails about lips and kiss and teeth. Kissing so, is very important. Can we please? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> um, Dink Man Diva, this segment, we're going to run it very quickly. You can't answer a question except in an accent of any culture or, you know, any accent whatsoever. Let me try mine. Dinkba and Diva. All right. You are Diva. I'm Dinkba. And Dinkba says, uh, so, uh, Adair in the good. So when you think about uh, your mission on Facebook, you on Facebook, or you're on YouTube, or you're putting out these videos. So, so what is your mission? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, I'm trying to... Is that I'm an accent? <laughs> that is not an accent. <laughs> I am try, trying to... Who we'll take that one? That's the I easiest am, one. I don't have another accent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone else. <laughs> okay. I am trying to build a platform okay. where people can be themselves, express themselves, and live their truth. Huh. So that's the platform that I'm building. So you say that the videos will soon have like interviews and like people coming on with you and you guys talking. You or... know the sad thing? I've been so lazy. I haven't really thought about <laughs> this so much. Like, you know, sometimes So I, wait a second. You're causing all this trouble on Facebook and from through work, YouTube. I'm tired. You're doing all of this controversy like each time i see your post on, and i look it's like 24 people arguing about what and you just I, coming in there and adding pepper and be I, like i think for me right now it's just something i do for fun okay so but but it's my it's page fun has, that is making people think think yeah, again it, you know it's something i've been doing for fun because me i think the problem that i'm facing right now is consistency okay you know because i'm like i come back from work i'm like i'm tired like i just want to go to sleep or you know like life 
you know it comes into play and all that stuff so it kind of because because my initial goal was to be releasing videos every week like okay. every wednesday i have not been doing that we've not been answering this with an accent though just so you know oh sorry sorry yeah exactly so that's your goal you were yes. like i want to so, i want to be able to bring it up so right now i've been doing it for fun okay and you know to see where it goes but I, I just want my page to be a place where people can just feel free, free. to speak their truth, really. Feel free to speak your truth. And no shaming, even though people always shame. It's always, man, it's, I remember yeah. the epic ones where you were calling people out. Hmm. Like, like, who did I call out? You remember that whole incident now with the guy who owed you money? <laughs> oh, yeah, you had the whole thing with the guys after. Hey, folks, no. you have to follow When you borrow money from Enugu. me, you should not be gaining weight or, Wait, you're not or like, traveling. <laughs> you're not you like 50 cents. Huh? You're like, you should, they should be gaining weight. You they should, should be... not be gaining weight. They should not be traveling. I should not be seeing you doing from this tri uh, trip to wow. this trip. No. Hashtag uh, <laughs> <Living>. Nigeria. <laughs> Hashtag living my best life. And then you owe me money. What the heck? Are you mad? You've not become the 50 cents of the, the, the Nigerian. No, 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 no. That community. one, he borrowed money from me seven years ago. <laughs> this, If you see the guy oh, insult, I, one day I woke up. I said, oh my gosh, I'm so broke. Like, and somebody owes me some money somewhere. And That's the sleeping. best way to remember when somebody owes you money. Like, well, you're you're broke. Like, you're broke. I'm like, where are the people that ah. owe me? Let me? Let me do this. Oh, but anyway, I collected my money, so... I, I see you. You collected it That's and, the best and blocked, Social media. blocked him. No, he blocked me. Oh. oh, he blocked you after he paid. Yeah, because I didn't even put him on blast. I said one Bini boy borrowed money from me seven years ago. How many Bini friends do you have? Everybody knows he's the one. No, I have a lot of Bini friends. I know the person. He knows himself. I said one Bini boy borrowed money from me seven years ago. But now people can ago, go through and, and see who blocked who, and they'll be like, okay, you were the one. I don't even care. I, but the thing is, I didn't put him on blast. I just said, Bini boy. I say, if I don't get my money in the next 24 hours, my Facebook will have a face. And then he inboxed me. Straight up. He knew he, he knew. Yeah. He knew. He inboxed me. He said, oh, I'm going to put him on blast like that. I said, seven years. I haven't put you on blast. You should be happy. Wow. I, have, I didn't even put your name. Epic. If I don't get my money. Epic. So he said, "Don't insult me because of you know." He deposited my because of five hundred dollars. He deposited my money. Unbelievable. And then he said, "Oh, he even said to me, please go and tell your useless Facebook friends that the Bini boy paid.'" So I came back and I said, "Praise, praise the living God. The Bini boy has paid. I've collected my <laughs> money. What does the I remember some <laughs> of the comments in that post where people were like, "Tag him, where, tag him, yeah, huh? tag him, and and tell us who that is." People right. always come to my page and look for trouble, and so, then well, when I give them trouble, they complain. Well, it seems like a making your mission happen you want it to be a platform where people can speak their truth and where people can actually yeah and you're right there as a catalyst to make all that happen so yes. to round off we can't go anywhere without talking toilet seat conversations okay and don't forget to flush we know that some of the biggest ideas changes in people's lives information and how they act happens on the toilet seats so let me ask you this Ada. Mm -hmm. what advice did you give yourself that helped you become bold to become Adenugu in that sense. Like this Adenugu persona that everyone is like, yo, this is the person you should go to and watch our videos and hear truth. Um, what what advice did you give yourself that helped you be bold? Hmm. I'll say I think I came to realize that people are not who they seem to be. Mm. So at a point, I'm like, I don't want to be living that life where people tell you something else, their behavior is different. Mm. So I'm like, what's the point? And then you keep on lying and, you know, trying to cover the lies, you know, why your behavior With is more like, lies. Yeah. I'm like, at a point, I'm like, sometimes you outgrow this nonsense. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I've outgrown this, like. At, at a point, you come to realize nobody's going to beat you. My mom doesn't even beat me anymore. So... I like how you put any more at the back. <laughs> it's not, oh, my mom has never beaten me before. It's like, oh, my mom, uh, you my know, any more. No. You know, after I, after I grew up, I, I bought my own teacher. house. My mom is a, a Nigerian teacher. <laughs> they had me stressed for how many years? So wait, you're the so, naughty of the of the twins. Like you, you and your sister, you are the we're one who's... completely two different people. Wow. We don't look anything alike. We don't act alike. I think I look better. 
but she's always like you know the ugly she ones will, she will not be she's always like the podcast. ugly ones always talk first but i'm like whatever <laughs> So you guys really give yourselves but these jobs. I'm more of gotta 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 than her. Yeah, she's more of laid she's, back. She's very laid back, reserved. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is that the difference you can between, tell from the pictures. Like when both of you take pictures, everybody can tell and be like, eh, eh, Ada, Ada I am the, not a trouble Ada, 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 Ada is the one. But you know the thing is that between me and my sister, if my sister also says no, that's it. Don't even bother asking again. Because she's like she's she's that's, that's it. it. But me. I will say, like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll cuss you, <laughs> like I will cuss you out, and then I'll start feeling better. Then I'll end up doing it. Like in my family, if anybody wants anything done, they ask EJ. They will know that I'll cuss you out, but I'll still do it. Wow, what a way to uh-huh. live! I'll cuss you out, but I'll do it for you. <laughs> that's my that's my that's but my motto. They don't even go to my twin because my twin is like no. So mm-hmm. you are saying go forward. The advice you are giving everyone, in essence, is live hey, your truth. Live your truth by mm-hmm. telling yourself that live your truth. No, nobody really, nobody, yeah. nobody's going to punish you for being yourself. The the amazing thing about God that I love is the fact that nobody is perfect. Mm. All of us, we all have struggles that we are facing every single day. My struggle now is me finding another job and leave my job. <laughs> <laughs> and cuss my boss out and leave. After saying everything That's you said <laughs> about about trying to hide your personalities from your company, you're here saying that you want to change jobs. Oh, gosh. I, I want to change job and move on. But my thing is that we all have, if whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're, you know, there's one battle that everybody is battling with. Some people want to be skinny, but they're fat. Some people want to be fat, but they're skinny. Like, some people, I'm like, Sometimes I'm like, yeah, my my pot belly. I need to use this pot belly. But <laughs> yeah, all of us. But we there's have no pot other place belly. to put my phone except on my pot belly. So uh, Sam's, <laughs> all Sam's, of us, we are <laughs> we all like Sam's, that. Sam's a dwarf so, of us. so just think of it. My advice to people is like, you might think that your life is not going in the right direction based on what the society expects it to be or what the measure. You know, it's not measuring up to what society yeah. think it should be. But my thing is that everybody is going even the president even obama and his wife i'm sure they have their own drama that they're going through everybody is suffering there's some people in the hospital you know yeah their body parts are being cut off just for them to live so you're here you're like oh you know this and this and this like my thing is that just live it live your life like it's the it's your last day yeah. on earth because you no know, all those people you're trying to be perfect for you don't know what they're going through behind closed yeah. door you know yeah. Especially, like I said to my, you know, single friends, I'm always like, yeah, I get it. It gets lonely. You want to marry, you want to have children. Yeah. But there's some people also in that marriage that are miserable that will wish to be in your yeah, situation. Yeah, equally as lonely as well. Yeah. You know, so just, just because themselves. all of us, we all come out, we post pictures where with filter. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, with filter. <laughs> yeah, with filter. You don't know if the filter is covering the black eye they received from yesterday and you want the marriage, you want marriage. So... Sometimes, yeah, I get it. As human beings, sometimes we give up, we get tired. When you look around you, it seems like everybody else's life is moving forward except mm-hmm. yours. Like there's some days I might be feeling so sad. I'm like, oh, today is not a good day. I'll eat all the ice cream in my fridge. I'm sad. And then you log on on Facebook. There's somebody is getting married. Somebody is having children and all yeah. this stuff. And then you're like, God, why is my own? You know, mm-hmm. you start doubting God and you're like, why is my life not moving forward? But then when you sometimes you have to sit back and you say, you know what? Thank you, God. Yeah. Because at, at least I'm alive. We got to be thankful. Yeah. That's at fine. least I'm alive today. There's some people. I have some friends that are going through cancer right now. You know, body parts are being cut off and all they pray. They say to me, IJ, like if you wake up every day and you breathe, you have to be thankful. Agreed. So that's Agreed just, that. that's why I started living my best life. I'm like, you know what? All these people that are making fun of you, people like to put you down. Because, you know, their life is not going well. So they always find a way to put you down and put your ego down. Yeah. So <laughs> Their own lives, yes. It's yeah, not going so. Well. So, they, so that, that you've just shared with us the back story to why there is unfiltered at that yes. indigo. Because mm-hmm. right now it's like, hey, we're, we're going to do this only one life to See live. See you, boo. I wow. do me, boo. <laughs> hey, we'll take it. We'll take it on that note. On that note. So tell people one more time where to find you. So I'm all over the place. So social media, my Instagram, baby doke. 
you know baby do k b a b y d i o k a y baby, baby do k uh-huh. ah, baby do k i have to put ibo in it yeah which know? means baby is correct baby yeah is the baby good. is fine ah, she's <laughs> right there it's not my fault my parents took the hey, time we we have to agree <laughs> you have the right energy and then facebook my personal page is adenugu i guess i'm still debating whether i want to make my facebook page public cuz right now it's private Huh, okay. Yeah, cuz I'm like I still want to have that control or, or control of, you know, like my videos when I post it on my page I make it public. But like some of my statuses, you know, that are the ones that I write now, I'm like I just want people just with the it. folks who are following. Well, it's, yeah. it's still a way to grow your following. I mean, people want to get on board, they'll just come follow you or Yeah. You know, get yeah, yeah. so there's just some things I still put in. I'm like, okay, I don't want everybody outside my friends list. And then it's like I, I think and then I have a lot of people friend uh, waiting list. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that I'm like, should I add this person? Should I not? Wow. Cuz I, I think I, I like the fact that you're having waiting list. All of us are still struggling to get many people. Man. Yeah, and then you know, so for my blogging, I go by unfiltered dash adenugu. Okay, but my personal page is adenugu, just by itself. Sounds perfect. Well, for me, I'm Namo, uh, N A M O worldwide, Namo worldwide on social media, and website is namoworldwide.com. Uh, but together, uh, we're we're very excited to say thank you to everyone who's listened this far, who's been with us on this journey. Uh, we appreciate you and um, we want to sign off very quickly and um, we hope to uh, speak to you all again soon. So thank you for joining us at Don't Forget to Flush. Uh, please send us an email, don't forget to flush pod at gmail.com. That's our email address. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Uh, that pepper soup was just fantastic. Oh, By the way, this hey. house is very, we should do another episode about, about uh, this building. I don't know. All of you people in Houston, everybody just living in 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 very very. You guys to move to Houston. You guys they do shakara. You say you love East Coast. We're out. We're out. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs>